There we go. That is working. Magnificent. Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Forging Fates. Uh, that is me checking here. Uh, if you're new here, we are building an inclusive space for people of all walks of life through the power of friendship, magic, and tabletop role-playing games. Tonight we have Forging Fate, a sober D&D campaign set in the critical role world of Exandria, following our adventuring party, the Fists of Fate. As always, we are partnered with the Phoenix, a non-profit group building a community of people in recovery, aiming to end the stigma around the rehabilitation journey from substance use through a sober, active lifestyle. They have an app you can use to schedule in-person or virtual events, including yoga, D&D, meditation, and rock climbing, just to name a few. You can click the link below to download the app and connect with a new community of friends to support your journey and i'm gonna open it up to everyone hello everyone hi joe hello if you like what we do and you would like to support the channel you can drop a tip in the tip jar it's down below you can get something nice from our online merch shop you can follow links for that or you can donate to one of our patreon tiers there's a bunch of them Anything you could send our way helps us bring more of this content to you. And you guys can also support us by subscribing and following all of our socials, along with watching, liking, and sharing our videos. Uh, you too can become one of the New Age Geeks simply by joining our Discord or subscribing to our Twitch and YouTube channels. Parts include moderated chats, emotes by one of our favorite geeks, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah and chat rooms with the cast and other members of our growing community. Again, thank you geeks for joining us on tonight's episode of Forging Fates. Okay. Does anyone have anything else to discuss before we jump into tonight's episode? You can check out on YouTube last week's Goodberry Cafe where some of the cast played Everyone is John and it was a wild ride um, hosted by Game Master Dylan at so that's up on our YouTube channel now. That was a lot of fun. It was a good time. Um, if everyone could just give us a heads up if anyone sounds low uh, today, I'll adjust as we go. But if no one has anything else, let's dive right into tonight's episode of Forging Fates. Okay, so picking up where we last left off, making their way through the Umbra Hills towards uh, Whisper's old home of Leeringorn, the group on the first day encountered a band of goblins being led, what they would later find out, by a bargeist, which uh, harangued them on their journey northwards. Uh, as uh, after dispatching them, they continued on unobstructed for the rest of the day before eventually pulling off to the side of the road to set up camp for the evening. Um, <laughs> uh, and from there, they began their watches for the evening. Uh, mostly uneventful, with the exception of the sounds in the distance uh, giving rise to that this is maybe not the safest place in the world and and as they all set up camp and eventually making uh, Tristan refusing to sleep for the evening eventually seeing uh, something in the shadows and as Finnick rested for the evening, she was haunted yet again by a nightmare of her parents and her friends being tortured. And Whisper was actually uh, accosted in her dream state 
by her sister who let her reason for hating <laughs> Whisper be known before eventually a fey entity interrupted the dream, pulling Whisper out before any uh, further damage could be done. And right, so picking up from there, uh, Clover being the last one, the last shift, as you watch the sunrise for the day, the shadows kind of creeping long across the, the hills, seemingly a little darker than you would expect, but nothing seems to accost you on your watch. You uh, are able to start rising everyone for the day ahead. Okay. Um, I will. I will get up and uh, let everyone know that it's morning time. Did Oma do the same thing? Okay. So. Um, as I'm going around and look and like waking everyone up, do I know notice that Gem, I mean Whisper and Finnick are uh, distressed? Uh, Finnick is seemingly drenched in sweat, um, where uh, Whisper is not so much. Uh, you see her a little concerned before she suddenly bolts awake. Probably my my teeth are a little sharp. Oh, uh, when I wake up. I'm gonna grab a little rag from my bag and start patting Finnick's head with it. Like, it's time to wake up, are you okay? As she starts doing that, I immediately sit up and just take a huge gasp for air. Hi. <gasps> Sorry if I if I startled you. You didn't. Did you have a bad dream? Unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, have some water. <laughs> Are you sure that was water? I don't know, it perked me up a little bit. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm sick of these nightmares and dreams and just getting out of control. I'm gonna stoke the fire, kinda pull out all of my cook's utensils and get breakfast going. I'm gonna sit uh behind him while he's doing that up against any kind of tree or anything and just start <clears throat> playing a flute. Okay. Anything you guys want to discuss or kind of get your breakfast going and then jump on the road? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get up, take a quick walk, just sort of walk things off, see if it puts me in a better state of mind. Okay. Uh, I want to you... make sure Talon gets breakfast. Too. Okay, Talon eagerly uh, scarfs down whatever meats you throw in front of him, much like uh, yourself. Um, Finnick, you um, start to take a little bit of a stroll, um, looking out not a whole lot to the uh, the Umber Hills in this area. It's a lot of just this uh, tannish brown grass that kind of just sways against the wind in this open open area. Um, and as I'm walking, I'm just sort of going to be talking to myself. 
like they can't hurt you here it's just a dream like they don't have control over you anymore but I'm also going to be sitting there stewing about the whole aberration and aberrant mind thing like that's just one thing I don't understand like why they're calling me that uh, as you are taking this walk a familiar blue bird flitters down and lands onto your shoulder hello <laughs> um I just sort of look over at it and see if it reacts or anything. It's just head turned, looking directly at you. Well, you are a very pretty bird. I will say that much. As you continue your walk, just sits there on your shoulder. Then as you begin to make your way back towards camp, it flies off. What's for breakfast? Well, I just kept a little bit of the bacon and uh, some meats we had along the way. Had some dried meats from when we left, some bread. Um, and I picked up a couple eggs on the last trip to the village we passed through simple but it's uh it's what we got you're not you're not cooking any of the goblins we just killed right <laughs> sure hope not well i'm just making sure because goblin doesn't taste very good i'll be honest that fact is disturbing but i'm also not surprised that you know that you don't know it unless you try just just as a rule, I don't usually cook things that were wearing clothes at one point. I you made an exception. The... I made an exception for Redep. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> yeah, no, no. None of this is goblin. I'm going to test you on that again sometime this week. You're going to what? Test, test you on not cooking things wearing clothes this week. If you put a bow tie on a pig, I don't know exactly. if that counts. <laughs> don't give away my plan. <laughs> it was just a guess. It was just a guess. Actually, now that you mention it, Tristan, didn't Marie Lynn have a, a chicken that wore a, a, a tie? Like a little red and white striped one? Yeah, the one, the the one, the leader. She called it the one that really? ran the the biggest one. Yes. Yeah, she called it something like El Jefe or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, no, we, not usually, but occasionally I will make an exception. But default is is if it's wearing clothes. I don't tend to want to cook that. Um, Clover pulls out some of her veggie rations and starts nibbling them, uh, looking at everyone else in, uh, superiority. <laughs> I'm sorry, I completely forgot. Uh, do, do, do you have enough there? Do you, do you need me to grill some of those up? I'm good. Pan serum? Okay. It's nice for all of us, I guess. So how are we all feeling? You know, okay. could be better, could be worse. Um, I also saw that blue bird that we saw early, like previously. Right, it's following us. Seems like a good bird, but. Did I mean, you get a feather? Um, I will check my persons for a feather, Joe. Um, <clears throat> you do see a feather kind of like tucked into your collar. Uh, 
Blue Feather, Blue Feather Club. Oh, that's a better name. We should do the Blue Feather Club. Instead of the Fist of Fate? No, I'm just... I'm just having breakfast conversation. It is a good name, though. Um, I'll just take some uh, string and tie the blue feather to my necklace. It could be our, uh, our secret club. Yeah, Or our band name. Ooh. I don't play any musical instruments. I was going to say I'm not very musically gifted. Um, I'm also, I've never really played an instrument. I mean, we could all take lessons yeah. from uh, Tristan yeah. over here with that flute. Yeah. And kind of do like a cough in the middle of playing like, like a, a nerve thing. <laughs> and then a, <laughs> and like, and like I'm paying, not paying attention. I keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> At least we have Tristan. <laughs> Well, anyway, so does that mean that this bluebird has visited all of us now? I mean, this would be the first time that I've, I guess, interacted with it. Yeah, like, I don't think I have. I mean, you get, like, at least I know Whisper and Tristan and possibly Clover have closer, um, or have had previous experiences with the bird. But. We all saw it together, though, that one time on the stage. <laughs> yeah, it's the only interaction I've had with it. Just wait. I'm sure your turn is coming. Oh, no, we, 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 I was I was on my stroll. I was just talking to myself, and then it showed up on my shoulder. What were you talking to yourself about? Just, like, some grounding techniques. Grounding techniques like you, you like you were punishing yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, grounding is just like sort of bring. I, I, God damn it! <laughs> like not letting my mind wander too much, or uh, basically the opposite of grounding myself. I'm just trying to. This is a really hard thing to explain. <laughs> Just getting in touch with the world around me. That's a better way you put it. Okay. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that you grounded yourself very good. I did, for the most part, thank you. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, what's the next part of our journey? Uh, you have, we have a map. Another few days left in the travel north. Super dangerous mountain. Right. Um, you have probably another day or two in the Umber Hills before you make it to the mountains. Okay. Cool. Well. Oh, Tristan, there was a question that I wanted to ask you. He looks over and plays a little, a little lowers his volume in playing, but he's playing and still listening. Um, I, I mentioned this to Gormrog previously, um, but I want to get more comfortable with, like, weapons and such, or at least, like, sort of, like, improving my strength so a sword doesn't feel like a hundred pounds, and I don't know if you'd be able to help me out with that. Um, if you want to definitely take some time out of... You know, some travel or some, some, uh, or we'll take the same nights uh, or same rests for, or the same breaks for our rests, and I can definitely teach you how to 
wield some sort of sword. I don't know if you'll be able to wield and I, you know, stand up and pull my sword and kind of got, get fancy with it a little bit and then put it back. Can I try and hold it? And I pull it out and I go, and, I, and I'm holding it hilt to her, blade to me, with my, my fingers forward. Okay, I'm going to reach and grab for the sword. Okay, what's your strength? Ten. Roll the strength check for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, that is a twelve. Okay, I mean you're able to hold it. It's heavy, um, and you feel like you may be a little un, unwieldy if you tried to swing it around. But is know. it a long sword or a great sword? It's it's technically a great sword, but it's a it's a giant. It's a very 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 long katana. It's like a, it's a katana shape, but with a longer and thicker blade. Do you want to try holding my rapier? It's very thin and light. Um, that I, I might be a better starting point. I I grab I I help I grab the sword. Um, <laughs> put it back. I will share my rapier with uh. The back. Actually, I'm gonna keep my sword out. Okay, so I'm just trying to get a feel for the rapier. And it's like a it's like a fencing sword where it's like that like long thin mm -hmm. tip, yeah. Okay. And is that a light weapon? Is it considered a light weapon? Um it it can be. There are different levels of it where it eventually could become a light weapon and then eventually plus one, two, three, whatever weapons, but right now it's just a regular rapier. Okay. Because I know I'm proficient in light weapons, so I didn't know what yours was. It is not considered a light weapon at this time. But I'm assuming it's easier to hold. Yeah, oh, you can hold it. Yeah, you just aren't proficient with using a sword of this type and as she's like looking at it and holding it in certain angles i'm going to take my great sword my katana and put it into the dirt and i'm going to kind of like stand in front of her and look her in the eye like with like you know fun intent and i'm going to i was holding it do a quick dash and swing at her but purposely swing for the blade even wherever she puts the blade to defend herself hit the blade on purpose but go at like I'm going to a hitter with with my dagger. I'm gonna pull my dagger out and dash at her, and take a quick swing like I'm gonna hit her. But wherever she puts the blade is where I'm gonna swing on purpose. Okay. Okay. So we're sparring right now. <laughs> Love that. Sort, sort of. Okay. I don't even know what to do for that. So. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this one, this right now, this rapier is a plus six. So if you wanna swing at him. But I'm not proficient, so the yeah. I'm not. That's just what the weapon hit it. Well, I guess that's me. I don't know what. Yeah, it's for you. It's going to be your dex modifier. Oh, I see. So I have no idea what it would be for me, but I'm going to try and counter. It's, it's going to be just your dex modifier. Okay, I'm just going to try and counter his attack. All right, roll a d20. And add my dex. That's an 18. Yeah. Oh, I'd say easy enough. You're able to get the blade up and kind of parry the uh, the dagger coming out you at you. Just sort of like <laughs> and throw my I, eyebrows and tilt my head. I twirl, like spin around my hand and put it back where it belongs and go. Mm -hmm. Lesson one. We'll get started next time. <laughs> and then smile and laugh, walk away and start playing my flute, grab my sword and put it back. <laughs> Kristen, if you ever want to give her a, a de demonstration, I wouldn't mind going one-on-one -on -one with you. Oh, I stop. Turn back. Ugh, very, very keen smile. And whenever you're ready. Then... <laughs> <laughs> I was born ready. 
I think. I don't know much about that time of my life. <laughs> but yeah, how does that feel? How does that feel, Finnick? Um, I guess better than, you know, the one that's like four times the size, but... I actually took four years of fencing, so I'd be happy to show you some of the tricks and things that we learn in class. I would appreciate that. I mean, I know we have a long journey ahead of us, so maybe I can learn something from each and every one of you. Even Talon, probably. But... All right. Are you all ready to get back on the road? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, let's pack up, get on the cart, and head north. Hi, guys. You guess. Yeah. Wasn't this your mission that we caught up to you with? Yeah. Are you changing your mind? No. Are you just a little nervous? Yeah. I'm a little nervous too. It's okay. I'm like braiding a, a druid crafted like vine into Talon's like head. <laughs> just sits just happy as a clam. Just. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you all gather up onto the cart, getting ready to launch off for the day, who is going to pilot? the cart for the day i'm going to find a spot comfortable not comfortable to lean up against and try to close my eyes okay pass out okay so not tristan lead the cart i guess all right so glomrug go ahead and roll a d20 for me d20 i'm gonna be on talon i think um i wouldn't mind sitting up front and helping navigate i'll sit in the back tristan Okay. But at some point, like while he's sleeping, I'm just gonna like grab like a little smudge of dirt and put it on his nose. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> One. Okay. Oh no! <laughs> Starting off strong, guys. Ancient red dragon. <laughs> uh, I'm helping him navigate. Can he get? Well, that's just to, that's just for the event for the day. So. Oh, okay, cool. So the pair of you can go ahead and roll uh, survival checks. Ooh, okay. As you following the path northward. Survival is plus three. I'm surprised by that. That's pretty high. I also have a plus three. I got a 16 total. I got a 14. Okay. So together, that's a thirty. Yep, you both feel you both you both feel pretty confident in your ability to follow a a, a trail northwards. It's a you guys aren't really going off the beaten path to try and be stealthy in this in your approach northward. So there, it's it's easy enough to follow the the bit of worn down path that leads north. Um, but your day goes by, the hours ticking through. Uh. With little, little to no uh, interruptions, you don't really see anything on the horizons as you travel northward, um, and the day begins to set as you move your way up through the Umbra Hills, approaching the mountain range ahead. So I've gotten my four hours. By this time, for a long Correct. Time. Uh, whisper. As uh, the day gets closer, you moving through the Umber Hills up towards this mountain range that surrounds uh, the Gray Valley, which you have traveled through once before. Um. <sighs> What do you guys want to do?
What time is it now? Why. I mean, how much have we been traveling so far? Uh, for your eight, eight to ten hours. Oh, so I'm awake then. Yeah, I'm awake. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna be. How how long is this cart, and would I have enough room to just like lie down? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm just gonna be lying down in the back of the cart, just sort of like trying to weave my magic between my fingers. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, like, just waiting for something to happen. So, <laughs> I'm gonna assume at this point, if I don't know if we're still traveling, I'm just gonna be sitting up front if Gormrog still. Uh, well, Clover's up there I mean, with with Gormrog. Doesn't really. Oh, okay, so I don't know if I'm, I'm gonna be. Three. Uh, okay, then I'm just gonna be. I yeah, mean, so, until we get you could stuff. you could still be in conversation if you yeah. needed to be. It, like, oh, okay, it's not know. like there's something dividing us. It, okay. It's just. I'll be out there sitting with them. Okay. So, what do you guys want to do for um, this day of travel? Um, I'll look around and see what's around. Okay. Roll a perception check for me. Mm-hmm. 23. Okay. God damn. Nice. I have good perception. Uh, looking out as you guys are going up and down these hills, making your way up towards the mountain range in front of you. Um, you uh, glance out and see just nothing in all directions. There's just this brown, reedy grass all over. You know, if I was a more anxious person, this might freak me out a little bit. What about it? It's the never-ending nothingness. Oh, it'll end eventually. The mountains all the way up there. It'll take mm-hmm. us a couple of days to get there, though. Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't live out here. Well, I mean, I have lived in areas like this. We traveled a lot growing up. But Yeah. A lot of this. Honestly, oh. the worst parts... Are between the hills and the valleys. Prone to flooding. People coming up over the ridge. Wild animals can get the mm. jump on you. It's the worst place to be in these things. I grew up on a farm and we didn't really travel much. Um, it was very comfy and cozy and we didn't really flood or anything. It was actually like the perfect place to grow up. Sounds nice. Yeah, no, um... visit my farm sometime. Yeah, I think we should definitely make some time to go out to Hexcomb Farm. That sounds like a lovely idea. Yeah, I'm super down for that. We have lots mm-hmm. of fresh honey and eggs. I guess the worst place I've traveled would be the Cinder Peaks, but it's also just hot as hell over there with the volcanoes and shit. What were you doing at the Cinder Peaks? Um, family business. <laughs> Which is what exactly? Um, I will. I. I'm having a brain fart right now. Um. I'm pretty sure I've told you guys that my family is a uh, fucked up group of people. Mm. And I was basically forced to join them on any travel or missions for the first 18 years of my life. So. Mm-hmm. I guess. Um, Forgive me if I'm being vague. It's just I don't really talk about this stuff too often. Hey, well, I'm not trying to pressure you into it. If you're not comfortable with it, that's that's fine. Um, we can change the subject. 
yeah, maybe, maybe in later I can get more into it, but, like, we've traveled all across Isilra, I think I'm pronouncing that right, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of Marquette and the um, Hespit Archipelago, and... You and all of it. I, yeah. This is the furthest I've ever traveled. Um, have not been to uh, Wild Mount though. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I've when been I thinking about traveled, Wild Mount. Uh, we traveled. You all could go anywhere in Exandria. Where would you want to go? Are you all talking on the cart? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not keeping it secret from you, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just will have to yell from from Fallon. <laughs> um. Well, I currently the reason I left home is because I'm trying to find out where I came from. And I don't really know if that's in Exandria, but if it is in Exandria, that's where I want to go the most. Problem is, I don't really know where I'm going. Well, let's find out together. I was going to say, I don't really have a set plan on travel. Um, I was supposed to be traveling with Felix, but... Um, you know, things happen, and so at least I've got you guys. I hope he's getting the answers he was looking for. Me too. I'm sure wherever he is, he's thinking of you too. I don't know about that. Lyndon told me that he sent him a letter, but he hasn't sent me any letters. He was kind of a super fixated kind of person. He, he came off as a very chaotic individual. I don't think he has a singular streamline of consciousness. Yeah, but if there was any one constant in either of our lives, it was each other. Yeah. It was kind of like Tristan and I in that way. You guys seem bonded. We were bonded. It was your best friend, huh? Well, he was the one who found me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's important to have people like that in your life, but sometimes our paths diverge, but they come back together eventually. Well, I'm sure. I hope when... so. But if it does, if, if we do come back together eventually, I'm going to have a few words for him. And I'm sure he'll be happy to hear every one of them. <laughs> now, um, Tristan, what about you? Where would you want to go in the world? I've honestly given this a lot of thought outside of the Platinum Sanctuary, the main one in Vessel Mm hmm. It's a beautiful place. I've been thinking about that place a lot lately. The one, the, the main... Like the home base of sorts? Yes. I've never been. Um, a lot more about that when we have a little bit more time for me to talk about it because I'm a little in between right now of how I feel about the Platinum Dragon and everything that's happening right now, but to be honest, anywhere I really want to go is home. That will be home for the rest of my life. You want a home You're for looking. the rest of your life? The same one. I don't, I am, um, me and You want to plant roots? Yes. 
Sounds boring. I'm yelling all this from Talon's back. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I think that I've traveled and lived in so many different places enough in my life so far that I'm I'm ready to just be in one place that doesn't get destroyed, doesn't get <laughs> taken over or is not taken from me. Blown up. Yeah. 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 You look with that. It's part of why uh, we traveled so much growing up. We were nomads. Um, we'd make camp. We'd pick up and move. We followed herds of animals. We traveled all around. Um, just a very aggressive, interpersonal lifestyle that I didn't agree with. That sounds um, so fun. <laughs> it's fun at first. It's definitely fun at first. It, um... The the lifestyle can be fun, but it does get repetitive and tedious at times. And the only entertainment they really seek out is beating each other up. <laughs> was... well, let me repeat: the only entertainment is beating each other up. Like, it, it's cool for, like, a month. And then when you get your butt kicked every day for the next month... You it, stop getting your butt kicked. Then you start kicking butt. Well, you definitely get better at kicking butt at, yeah. with other people that aren't the ones that are kicking your butt every day. <laughs> I did not. But well, if now, so yeah, arguable. Uh, I had training Sorry, once I left my. Uh, whisper after we go and murder part of your family, maybe we can go back and meet mine. Um, or we can go find uh, Clovis, or we can go stop in at wherever Phoenix is or avoid them completely. I don't know what you want to do with that. Adventure! Um, yeah. One thing at a time, though. Your family first, but... Mm. Maybe after we kill Whisper's family, we can find some jobs, because I'm almost out of money. Where are you at with money? I got, like, 300 gold. Hand you five platinum. I'd, no. I might also have platinum. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I have 20 platinum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I totally could have bought more stuff shopping the other day. Yeah, that, that's another 200 <laughs> gold right there, friend. Um... I'm going to keep my five platinum. <laughs> I'm rich. Um, I'm rich. <laughs> Kristen, where do you want to put down roots? I, uh, I honestly don't know. I, I picture, and as I start saying it, you're getting a little uncomfortable, only a little bit. And he's uh, I just want what we had at our home. But Marie lives? Yes. But I want a family. Hmm. I want to raise a kid to fight and defend himself without being forced to. I want to try to become a better example than any examples that I've known. That's, uh... And as you say, you see him, he's like, he's grabbing his hands and he's like looking down, not looking up and not a very confident voice and saying it, first time saying it out loud, even to the Gormy oh. about that. Hey, Tristan, you got something right here. 
And just say it. Sort of playful. I'm trying to distract him for a second. I kind of look and I want to touch, but I don't. I don't want to be fooled. So I'm like, no, there's not. Do you want me to roll a deception check? <laughs> or do you want to roll an insight? She did put dirt on your face while you were sleeping. Oh, well, then, then after I hear that, I, <laughs> I touch my nose. I look at it and I don't know. I laugh and wipe. <laughs> If you want a kid, you got to be prepared for that kind of shit. So, I'm I'm just uh, I think I have only a little bit left of sword fighting left. Using my sword killing for the purpose, but that's not going to end until I figure this out and I start looking at the scales and. Until I can figure all of this out and wonder what's going to happen to me if I don't, I feel like I'm never going to be able to settle. It's going to be an ongoing thing. I'm sorry if this is kind of an off topic question, but how old are you? Sorry if that's rude, but. <laughs> No, it's I know, not. I know elves age differently. It, yes. Um, He's in, 897. Would you believe it? Not um, personally. In, in your years, I am about 25. And in your years? Oh, I'm sorry. I mixed it up. I'm sorry. In your years, I'm probably about... About four, five-ish, if even that much. In my years, I'm about 25, about to be 30. 330? I don't know if I'm getting that backwards or forwards. I'm, I'm yeah, but. I'll um, tell me like the eight to yeah, 900 the year. I'm, I'm getting my brain mixed up with getting the numbers. I'm not going numbers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your character. In my, in my youth, I am about. 15, I believe. I have, I have basically only... multiply it by 10. He, he's about 150. Okay. So, so you're younger than me? Maturity wise, yes, he is. <laughs> Maturity wise. Mm, that, that's an honest, that, that's an honest assessment. Uh, elves mature slower than uh, most others because they live so much longer. Um, most don't reach adulthood till about 100. Whisper, how old are you? I'm 99. <laughs> so are you like 12? Am I just hanging out with a bunch of children? I'm not 12. So like Maybe he's 150 and he's 15. He, he's like uh, technically he's an adult but not not really he's an immature adult uh, I'm 28 by the way when I pretend to be a human I pretend to be 19 me too well I'm a halfling <laughs> I, I am 19 I'm about 21. I sort of stopped keeping track, but. I had to keep track. My parents wouldn't let me leave the farm until I turned 19, but I finally turned 19. And so they were like, okay, you can do this and go, go do your thing. This explains so much. Like what? Why I'm the mom friend. <laughs> Wait, I have a question for Tristan. You talked about having a kid in a family. There's a step in between. Do you have someone in mind? And that's where he kind of he 
looks and then looks away and then kind of doesn't respond. And there's... And just... Kind of just stops. Kind of starts kind of not ignoring everyone, but very obviously hit a, I'm hit a, a nerve. Yeah. Is 15 a little young to start winning a family? In human years, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna start like slowly pulling my fluid out, not to play it, but like just trying to distract myself, and I'm just kind of messing with it after that. And remain silent. <laughs> I was going to say, this is the most socializing I've done in the past three years of my life. So I know we mentioned it earlier, but you guys are kind of the only friends. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it doesn't help that I was an only child and I was isolated for a majority of my youth. So, but, don't mean to bring the mood down. But, I, I, I do appreciate you guys being so welcoming and kind. Me too. Most people look at me and then just laugh at me. Um, and don't want to be my friend, but you guys haven't left yet, so that's really nice. I tried. Well, I don't think you're helping this bear. <laughs> Love, I, I relate to that particular plight. People see the tusks and they get a little uh, put off. So, when you said you were bullied or, you know, mistreated because of how you looked, I said, hey, what did I need when that was me? So I try to be that for you. I do hope I can find out why I look this way, though, one day. We can make it a goal. We can work that is, towards it. That is, that's the goal. That's why I left home. To find home and to find out why I look like a halfling rabbit. It's cute, though. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a cute look on you. I'm glad you think so. Sometimes, make being, it work. This, sometimes being this hairy is kind of rough. Especially in the summertime. Yeah. Very I... real. Very, very real. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm going to take another gander outside and see if uh, anything new has popped up. All right. Go ahead and uh, roll another perception check for me. I dropped it. Um, one plus nine, 18. Okay. Um, I will say. You see a familiar blue bird kind of trailing your cart, every just flittering there, gliding across the sky. Yes, the blue bird is back. And you also see. How, how far away from the cart is it? Maybe 10 feet. It's um, spying on us. It can I try... us being hairy. Can I try and form a telepathic? bond with it uh okay well because it gets the telepathic speech uh, but i basically just want to say like hello again can i ask why you're following us <clears throat> 
Um, you. Oh, wait a damn minute. I don't even know if that'll work. But I'm going to try it anyways. Um, okay. Uh, you definitely feel a connection made. You feel your mind connect to another conscious speaking mind, but there's no response. I don't know what to say. Um, are you trying to warn us of something? Are you like a sign of something? Because you seem to appear at the weirdest times. No answer. And what about you, Whisper? Where would you want to go in the world? Hmm. I'm on Talon, so you're going to have to yell that to me. I'm practicing Jigrikraft. Where do you want to go if you could go anywhere? Everywhere. I haven't been that many places, so everywhere. Um, I haven't found a place I want to stay yet. I'm gonna before the bond ends. I just want to try one more time with the bird, just asking, "Why did you show up when I was talking about my parents?" No response. Yeah. I tried. Um, Clover, as you're keeping lookout after noticing the bird, you see, uh, on the horizon behind you guys, just, just make, just barely visible, three shapes peek up on top of one of the hills. Uh, at this distance, um, it's, it's hard to really make out what it is, um, but I don't know what that means, Dormrug. Um, you said three shapes. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Three. Um, th they appear to have four legs each, um, kind of hunched over quadrupedal creatures. And guys, we've got company. Yeah. You said quadrupedal? Yeah. Cool. Okay. How Whisper, far you've got company. And Clover's going to point back on the horizon behind us. Can I tell what they are? Uh, roll a, either a survival check or a nature check. What do you see with your special eyes? My brand. So what time is it about now? Uh, it's getting late in the day now. It's the sun's beginning to set on the horizon. What's the swell? Um, they look canine in shape, but they're, I mean, it's hard to judge at this distance, but they seem pretty large. They might mm -hmm. be puppies, big puppies. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Do I know would like if... to... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, do I know if wolves or wargs or um, any hyena-like creatures or anything frequent this area based on my knowledge uh, as an outlander? Go ahead and roll an intelligence check or a nature check or any check do you want to... that would feel like it's applicable. I'm going to roll an acrobatics check. Okay, perfect. Be because <laughs> uh, it's, the one, or it's the one I have the highest modifier to. Uh -huh. 
I I know nothing, apparently. Okay. What did you roll? <laughs> Yikes. I don't um, have a modifier to make that work. Clover would like to ready her weapon, and if these got if these guys get within distance and look scary, she just wants to be ready to shoot at them. Okay. Um, they're they're very far off at this point. Um, just yep, she's just yeah. Just uh, she's just ready. They um they don't begin. They don't like break off at a run towards you at all as you're watching them. They just are slowly kind of stalking, staying at range. When, you know, as you guys continue on, you lose them behind one of the hills before eventually they pop up again as they make their way across the ridge of another. Uh, do I see Clover readying a weapon? Yeah. Clover, not, not all animals are bad. It's fine. It's just if they attack us. It's just if they look scary. Just, they, they're probably just trying to live their life. But they're following us. Yeah, we were interesting looking. Okay, well, if you go check them out and they're nice guys, then I won't shoot them. Well, I'm going to leave them alone unless, unless we have to. Well, me too. It. That's what... Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want you to attack first. I'm not going to attack unless I feel threatened. Okay. That okay. Works. So, what's the plan? You guys going to continue on through the night? Or? At some point, we'd make camp. Or do you want to make camp, yeah? Um. If we make camp, the dogs are definitely going to gain on us. Yeah, I think, like, uh, I would try to find a spot at the top of a hill with a decent vantage point, but uh, enough of a clearing that we can pull the cart to the side of the road, um, set up bedrolls, make a campfire. Okay. Uh, easy enough. As you guys kind of pull off to the side and begin setting up camp, that is where we'll call it uh, for our break. So uh, we'll be back in about five to ten minutes, and we'll see you guys soon. I'm Jacqueline Wilmot, Director of Volunteer and Community Engagement at the Phoenix. We're on a mission to help as many people as we can. I'm blown away, honestly, by the impact our volunteers are having across the country. The Phoenix is yoga, it's art, it's hiking, it's music. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening at the Phoenix. Now, because of our virtual volunteer platform, we can take Phoenix anywhere. All they have to do is pick up that volunteer flag and it's started. The people, they tend to come to the Phoenix because they get something out of it, you know? There's something genuine about that. And then, you know, along the way, they realize, I can give back. What's so unique about volunteering with the Phoenix is that you can just come as you are and we will give you the, the tools and the training to be successful. I became a volunteer with the Phoenix so that I could give back, even if it's just a little bit of what they've given me. One of my most favorite things about volunteering is meeting people, connecting. I've made friends that I will have for a lifetime. So it's been a dream of mine to be able to bring fitness or physical activities um, to the sober community here in Long Beach. And so to hear that the Phoenix was already here and doing that was super exciting for me. My service to others has been like played a major role in my personal recovery. So I like that the Phoenix lets me combine an activity and some service. I also really like riding my bike, so hand in hand, they go together. Oh, um, I love the Phoenix. I don't know. It's just. The classes have um, really helped me come out of my shell a little bit. I have my confidence back, which I didn't have even though I got clean from drugs and alcohol. I feel like my life is taking off and everybody at the Phoenix is helping me do that. Once Phoenix has helped you rise from the ashes, there's this sort of natural response where you want to do that for other people. And, and the beauty of that is as soon as they find that strength and fortitude in their recovery, 
they're reaching back for the next person. And if we did that across the country, imagine how many lives could be touched. So join us in this movement. Whether you are in recovery or an ally, you have something special to offer. Whether you are looking to lead events or support events, you already have everything you need to bring the Phoenix alive in your community. Get started today. We can't wait to make a difference alongside you.
I'm Jacqueline Wilmot, Director of Volunteer and Community Engagement at the Phoenix. We're on a mission to help as many people as we can. I'm blown away, honestly, by the impact our volunteers are having across the country. The Phoenix is yoga, it's art, it's hiking, it's music. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening at the Phoenix. Now, because of our virtual volunteer platform, we can take Phoenix anywhere. All they have to do is pick up that volunteer flag and it's started. The people, they tend to come. And we're back. Okay, so. Picking up where we last left off as you all set up camp atop a hill um, less than a day's journey from the base of the mountains. You all set up camp and begin to prepare yourselves for the evening. Who would like to take first watch? I'm going to do the same thing I did last. I'm just going to be up the whole night. Okay. Um, I will. I will take first watch with Tristan. Okay. So, go ahead and both of you roll perception checks for me. Mm -hmm. 19. Uh, not natural 20. Okay. Um, A dirty 20? Dirty 20. As you both sit there, uh, Looking out across the hills, you see the three forms moving in the shadows, kind of following along the path that you all took. Um, they're still a pretty good distance off, and you only just barely see them uh, as they silhouette against the back, uh, the, the hilltops. Um, but they are still out there making their way closer towards all of you. Um, how far off would you say that they are? Um... You're probably clocking them out at about a mile. All right, I'm going to go uh, up to Gormrog. I don't know if he's sleeping or not. Mm -hmm. Probably. If he's sleeping, I'm gonna give him a, a little, you know, nice little uh, cheek. <laughs> and, uh, I'm gonna go, like, uh, so um, they're about a mile back, and we're still being followed by those animals, if that's what they are. There's, uh -huh. there, um, I would advise that we actually either keep moving or pay attention to this because uh, I don't trust it. Uh -huh. Then give him another little, uh, little to the other side of the cheek and then go back to watch or to where we were. I will get up, apparently, <laughs> and join them in watching the three figures. Okay. So for about two hours, you watch as they slowly make their way closer and closer, uh, losing them in the darkness every once in a while as they slip into shadows and slowly creep towards your party. Do you think we should uh, get the rest of them up? I'm kind of a mind with Whisper here. If they don't do anything to us, we have no reason to do anything to them. All right. I would advise you to go back to bed, but I, I feel like I just don't feel right. Well, it doesn't feel right. To be completely honest, I've heard you say that phrase more times in the entire time that I've known you than I've heard it in my entire life. So I don't know if you're anxious or... My phrase, Gormry? Yeah, that, that, he's the only one allowed to call me that. Gormy? Uh -huh. He can't say my real name. No, I think she meant something doesn't feel right, right? 
That's that's what I thought. Yeah, no, I, that's what oh. I was referencing. Oh, okay, uh, okay, uh, that's, okay. I I'm still that. waking up. I apologize for not understanding that. <laughs> You're fine. I'm just saying. So when you, when we're when you're constantly living in the middle of nothing, when shadows are keeping over you, or we're we're being followed, or Ooh. nothing feels right, and that's. I mean, I was brought up in almost constant chaos, so I know what it's yeah. like. To Always be on your toes. You hear the yeah, faint no howling of wolves in the distance. Yeah, they do that. Um. What are they doing? How far away are they? Roll a perception check for me. Do you have dark vision? I do, yeah. Okay. With a plus three, that's 14 total. Okay. Uh, looking out, it's... Um, they. You see them moving through the shadows about, uh, at this point maybe three quarters of a mile off. They're definitely making their way towards you. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the reason we take watch, right? Like, if they get too close, or if they end up causing trouble, then we have people awake to keep everyone alerted. If you want to go back to sleep, Gormy, or lay down and relax, I'll hold it. Uh, be aware of our wits. You know, it must be nice having to only do like a four hour nap. I mean, that's all he needs, but it's not what he takes. He I mean, it's, sleeps it's, like an entire day. Never seen an elf sleep as much as this one does. But I'm just saying, like. It's nice. It, it seems like it would be nice to have more time in the day. I won't lie if I said it hasn't saved my life more than once. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, my sleep gets interrupted anyways, but... It would be nice to not have to sleep for so long. Mm. Kind of jealous of elves. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't be so jealous. Sometimes the uh, the longevity of your lives in the short sleep doesn't measure up to the the height that it's. <laughs> a lot of non elves think that it is. Sometimes it's a, a living curse. Believe me. If I'm being honest, I don't really know how long I'm going to live. Because, like, I know, like, powerful enough, like, magic users can, like, stop themselves from, like, aging and stuff. But, like, I don't know. Elves just, like, kind of, like, it's just, like, holy shit. You know. Unless we get torn apart, then that doesn't I, matter at all. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Are you not an elf? No. I, I, I've just been assuming. What? What? Uh. How do I say that without being insulting? Um, no, 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 no. It, it's it's hard because um, a lot of my kind doesn't usually have like pointed ears. Um, so, I mean, it's it's easier to like blend in with other people. But um, I, it's I'm an asimilar. If you guys know what that is. 
Would I know what that is? Why would you know what that is? I have no idea what that is. I have no idea what that is. So I'm just going to... Um, Forest people, plains people, city people. I don't know how to describe it other than, like, we have wings. Bird folk. What? You don't, bird folk, like Aracocra or, or Kenku. I don't have feathers. Yeah, um... I don't see wings. I don't really like to show them off. Um, I guess the only times that I show them are in like absolutely necessary situations. And I know you guys had mentioned earlier about being bullied or shamed for your appearances and mine has also caused similar experiences mm. so I, I just don't bring them out often People judge you because of how your wings look? Yeah. Okay. Okay. They they changed drastically within a very short amount of time. And I don't know. It's it, like they're often associated as like a bad thing, and they look the way they do. Um, and again, I'm scared to show them because I don't want people to judge me for it. While they're talking, how far away I'm looking? Where are they now? Um, roll a perception check. Eleven. On top of us. Sixteen. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, in the last 10 minutes, they don't seem to have gotten much closer. Okay. They're creeping very slowly, then. They are running at a full sprint, uh, and they are barreling down at about 60 miles an hour. Shit. <laughs> okay, so... If three wolves traveling 60 miles an hour... As you all are having your conversation and keeping track of the wolves approaching, Whisper, you find yourself once again in a familiar forest. What would you like to do? I'm gonna... Knowing what happened last time I found myself in this forest, I'm going to look around and try to be more aware of my surroundings. Okay. Well, a perception check for me. Nine. Okay. So much for that. Nine. <laughs> you uh, glance around in this small clearing in the forest. Um, and kind of turning to look and as you eventually turn you see in a thin black dress the familiar visage of your sister standing there still half of her face and arms scarred from acid burns she received I thought I smelled something funny you're so funny Fifth. She kind of starts stepping towards you closer. Why are you so obsessed with me? <sighs> A 
Little Lila, I promise you, I'm going to make it hurt. Why? Why? Why do, why does, why do, why do I matter so much? Look at what you did to me. You deserve that. As you say that, you see her hand rise up, the twisted, gnarled flesh of her hand. You see magic, green, sickly magic spiral between her fingers. She turns and points a soul finger towards you. Roll a constitution saving throw. Well, you feel death strike your body. You feel the life sucked from your chest through that green, sickly magic that she strikes you with. Everything goes black. You wake up in the fields of the Umbra Hills. Around me? Uh, you see Gormrog, Finnick, and Tristan towards the edge of the fire, kind of looking out across the hills. You see Clover asleep a few feet off from you. I'm going to sit up and lumber my way over to them. I think, I think my sister is waiting for me. I'm just going to wordlessly just hand her some some prepackaged food. <laughs> she keeps appearing in my in my dreams and she's just very angry. Do you know why she's angry? At me. What? She's angry at me. She says she's gonna make it hurt. Like she hasn't made me hurt before. Sounds like somebody has a vendetta. Yeah, she's kind of obsessed, it seems. But it's really weird because it's like she's doing stuff to me in my dreams and it's like I'm feeling it. Is that normal? Is that like a magic thing? I mean, I when I have my nightmares, I I feel everything. But Does it actually like affect you, or is it just like a dream feel? I mean, you've seen me waking up, sweating, and my often my nightmares are filled with fire. So, but of other dreams I've had. Like, it it doesn't affect my actual physical body. Yeah, that's what I'm... It's like... I guess I'm just wondering if she could actually hurt me in my dreams. Because I don't know. Uh, I'm no magical expert here, but... Looking her over, do I see any wounds does she look okay um don't see any wounds um looks a little shaken her skin looks a little pale um roll a oh. roll a medicine check I don't get very many of those 17 um she actually looks pretty pale considering you notice the vein across her neck doesn't seem what about it it's you're looking at it and you normally you'd see it pulse rapidly from someone 
woken up from a uh-huh. dream in the way, but it doesn't seem to pulse. Whisper, I... I don't know much about magic, but you do seem off. May I check your pulse, your vitals? I'm fine. Okay. Insight check. Go ahead and roll an insight check. Whisper, go ahead and roll either a deception or a persuasion check, and you decide which one. (laughs) He's setting a boundary. I'm just going to respect it. (laughs) Oh, what does it say? Uh, the 22 insight. Um, I did not beat that. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh, so. Clearly lying. <laughs> Clearly trying to hide something, though you're not exactly sure what. Whisper, if you're not okay at all, like, if you have anything concerning happening, you can tell us. I'm trying to tell you. I keep having these dreams. But what are you all looking at? You don't seem to have a pulse. You're almost as pale as I am. Spooky dreams. Usually make your heart beat faster. Elevate your blood pressure. I don't know anything about that. It'll make it visible in your neck or on your wrist or anywhere where your veins are close to the surface of your skin. Um, I don't know if it's going to help, but I'm going to try to use magic awareness. Using her as the, the not obviously and see if that does anything. What does that detect again? I'm sorry. Um, uh, as an action, you can open your awareness to the presence of concentrated magic until the end of your next turn. You know the location of any spell or magic item, or it's a spell, I, I figure spell or magic item. I don't know if they were separate or not. Uh, within 60 feet of you, uh, if there isn't behind total cover, when you sense a spell, you learn which school of magic it belongs to. Where is the item, Whisper? In my pouch. Your pouch? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Technically, technically in total cover. Um, nah. Though I will say, magical? what? It, says, it, says, it, says, it was the location of any spell or magic item. So I didn't know if the there was a spell or if the spell and magic item were separate. Um. I will say, Whisper is radi- radiating a s- level of magic that is unusual for elves. Okay. But I don't understand the school of the magic or what kind of magic it is. It is raw primordial magic. It doesn't belong to any school. Okay. Yeah, we've only seen that once before. Mortal death magic. So what are we looking at, y'all? I'm, I'm, I just want to make sure you're okay. Obviously, I'm not. I just want to move past it and get this over with. Just know if you ever need anybody to talk to. I'm, I I'm right here. You all are here, I know. But are the puppies still here? Yeah, they're about a half mile out. Puppies. Mm-hmm. Are they coming closer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've been slow and steady pace this whole time. Not attacking us. They probably just think we smell funny. We do smell kind of funny. We should probably take a bath soon or wash up soon. After. Yeah. I don't know. Next place 
with any kind of civilized society we stop, we definitely should. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, because that last town we were just in is the last stop before Laringorton, wasn't yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's we're gonna just be gonna a couple be smelly days. for a while. It's totally fine. Well, uh-huh. then we shouldn't be surprised that that puppies and, and animals are like, "What the fuck is that?" Okay. So what's the plan? Yeah. Uh... Hmm? What? No, I was gonna say if um, if anybody who uh, who was sleeping recently wants to relax again, I will keep watch. Oh no, I'm fine. Night. Just um, uh, if you hear a loud something, it'll be time to get up really fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be honest, I don't really want to, I don't think I'm sleeping tonight. I am. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume he would shoulder bump me as he walks past me. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I just, just, I, I tap my forehead to yours and, and keep moving. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, I like that forehead tapping thing. He's a uh, very. It's nice. He's the only brother I've ever had, and uh, I plan on. And I look back on forward, and I plan on keeping it that way for a long time. I've had family members and people I've trusted who have had my back, but he's the only brother I've ever had. Um, I guess there was something I wanted to ask you because, um, with with your whole family situation. Because I know that was brought up a little bit when we were um, dealing with the myriad. If, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. I was just curious. I... My family's a very complicated situation. Um, I understand that we all the yeah, family is just terrible and I just, um, I don't know. I was with my family and I am growing up was hard and I, I know since I'm growing up was very hard. And my family wasn't a huge fan of me because I didn't have magic, and I had to go to brute strength to defend myself, and I had to learn to defend myself, and then one day, I was gone, and I don't know how. Um, this, um, might, this might come off as weird, but I do relate in some sort of sense. Well, I guess, obviously, I have magic, but um, just sort of twirling this golden energy around my fingers. Um, But it was different than the rest of our groups, and I was mistreated for it. Um, I, yeah... This, yeah, we, it's the same story, but opposite. I was, uh, stops for a second, kind of goes to one knee, playing with the dirt while talking, not looking directly at her. And is, uh, yeah, I, I, my family brought me, they brought me down a lot. I was, my mother was the only one who kind of told me that I was worth something, but Everywhere else, other families, my father, and the rest of our entire family put me down for not having magic. I was the only one in my entire, I'm gonna go with village society. I don't remember too much because I was very young when one day I was just gone. 
Did you run away? Um, no, actually. The very opposite. I was trying to make a space for myself inside the society. And then one day I, and then he goes, he gets into that space where he's getting ready to talk about it and stops for a second. There was, I just woke up and I was chained to a wall inside of a cell. And I wonder, um, and he starts looking across, changing the subject. Uh, do we know where the wolves are? He um, <clears throat> stands up and kind of takes a couple steps forward, completely trying to erase the subject and change it. And starts looking to see where the wolves are. You're I muted. I'm gonna lean over to whisper. Oh, I was gonna. I'm not sure if I was gonna be there. Okay. Oh, well, because I guess after Tristan starts to walk away, I was gonna lean over to whisper and say, "We'll figure him out eventually." As you, Tristan, step up and begin looking out into the darkness again, you see one figure about 150 to 200 feet away from you. Large quadrupedal wolf slinking in the darkness, not hiding. It sees you and begins to make its way toward you slowly. As it comes into the gets closer into view, you see dark black fur, uh, a bright silver patch on the front of its chest, several quills kind of sticking up through the fur in its back, and you recognize this instantly as direwolf. It kind of lowers its head, its ears slinking down to the sides. I'm going to stand firm, and how far away are they from me? Maybe 20, them, uh, 20, 30 feet. Uh, yeah, um, um, whisper and Infinic. Maybe, maybe, maybe twenty feet. Depends on how far oh, away okay. you walked. I'm going to stand firm, and I'm going to hopefully, if they're close enough to see, make it very obvious that I'm going to start um, pulling my sword mm. out. Mm. Mm. Wait. No, no, I'm not. Like I said, not. Like, I'm grabbing my sword to pull it out. Okay. Do I see and that? I'm keeping yeah. complete eye contact with, and is holding my blade and hoping, and just hoping that someone behind me notices that I'm preoccupied with that, but I'm not making any sudden movements. And I'm just gonna sit there and stare until it makes a move or. What happens until okay. whatever happens. Uh, Whisper and Finnick, you see Tristan begin to draw his sword, and as you kind of look into the distance in front of him, just on the edge of the firelight, you see the the reflection in the eyes of flames licking from your uh, your fire pit against the eyes of the wolf. Um, I'm going to begin to stand up, but slowly. Um, and just sort of start um, walking towards Tristan, trying to, like, along, I'm right behind him, and I'm trying to pull his sword back down, because is it in a sheath? Yeah, it's a sheath on my back. It's, it's inside I'm, I'm of trying my... To pull it yeah. down, just so he sort of gets a hint, like, don't fucking do that. <laughs> I'm not going to resist. I'll, as I have it only out a little bit, I'm, I'll... And I'll just sort of, like, smack his hand. Just... If we don't come off as hostile, then maybe they, they won't have a reason to feel threatened. I'm going to walk forward towards Tristan seeing him. 
pulling out his sword. I'm going to walk forward confidently, but not threateningly, um, to see how close the wolves are. As you make your way next to Tristan, the, the wolf is continuing to walk closer and closer slowly, its ears tucked down. You see its hairs across like the ridge of its back all standing on end. It's definitely an aggressive posture, but it's, it's not uh, lunging at you. It's just trying to slowly inch closer. And I'm not breaking eye contact with it. I cast, I, once I get up, as I see it's walking closer, I cast Speak with Animals. Okay. And I want to step forward confidently, but not in an aggressive posture. And be, hello, friend. I see that you've been following us. Is there something that you need? We want food. We've got food. We can help you with that. Roll a persuasion check. Mm -hmm. Can I also take out one of my pocket kebabs? Because I've got four left. Sure. Does that help my persuasion? <laughs> Pretty small piece of meat, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> okay. That is a uh, 16. What do you have to feed us? So various, some meats and some rations. Um, what are you looking for? Something to fill our bellies. Kind of starts to lot of bare its teeth. Here? I'm There's not a lot of hunting around here. Not enough. I'm just gonna start slowly backing away so I'm closer to um. Clover and Gormrog. Okay. Uh, well, I can give you these kebabs for now, and I can go back to our fire and see what else we have left over. Just sits I know there. what it's like to be hungry. You see, it slowly starts to recede his teeth. But you said there were three of them? You only see one right now. Oh, okay. Well, I give him one kebab. As you hold it out to him, he doesn't reach for it. He just kind of waits for you to drop it on the ground. I don't like people feeding me either. Just looks down at it before looking back up towards you. Yeah, I'll go check camp. Is that okay? Doesn't reply. Um, I would like to try and look for the other two wolves. Roll a perception check. Ooh, is a another nineteen. Okay. Uh, looking out into the shadows, you try and scan around for the other two wolves, and you see two figures moving in the shadows closer and closer towards your sleeping horse. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Question, how far away are they? Uh, they're probably about 60 feet. Uh, your horse is probably about 30, th 30 to 35 feet away from you. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to cast Calm Emotions. I don't know if that works on animals, but it's uh, a fucking... <laughs> Who are you calming emotions? I don't know. They seem aggressive. They seem angry. So you're casting it on the wolves? Well, it's a 60-foot okay. range. So 60-foot sphere. Oh, wait, no. What? Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna... God damn it, I should really read my spells before I... Because <laughs> it's set on humanoids. God damn it. Yeah, it does not work okay, on... Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and cast Suggestion. 
Okay. So I'm going to get next to the horse so I'm within 30 feet of the wolves and cast suggestion um, on one of them. Okay. Um, so you cast the spell, but it fails because dire wolves don't speak common. Shit. <laughs> I'm a bitch. <laughs> Actually, you want to come to the camp with me? For what? Thought you were hungry and we're looking for food. You bring me food. Or I'll make you food. Okay, we don't have to be feisty with each other here. I'm trying to help you. What's your name? Atreus. Okay. Atreus. Okay. <laughs> That's a cool name. I had a cool name. And what are your friends' names? (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) I'm not thinking about the friends right now. And what are the horses' names? And what are the rabbits' (laughs) names? And what are the birds' names? That's Greg. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, well, um, I'll go check you out, but... You gotta promise me you're not gonna, like, attack us. We're trying to help. We're not... Here to hurt you or anything. Oh, yeah. Roll a persuasion check. Mm. Okay. Okay. Seeing as that spell did not work, I'm gonna go and just gently tap on Clover and Gormrog, try and wake them up. Fourteen. Okay. I gotta say, if you wake me up, I'm gonna shoot him. So <laughs> think very, think very carefully <laughs> about that. I wake up Gormrog first. Okay. Okay. Um, like a note right there, like wake me up, I'm shooting. <laughs> um, I'm trying to do it gently so as not to startle him awake. Okay. Uh, whisper as you step step back from Atreus, he kind of looks at you, licks his chops. I'll wait. Okay. I'm gonna walk the camp, but like keeping one eye on him. Um, and if I pass Tristan or Finnick, I'd be like, they're looking for food. They're very hungry, apparently. Uh, um, mm-hmm, and I've only mm-hmm, got mm-hmm. a short more time I can talk to them, so we should give them some food. We got two of them eyeing up our horse. So that's not allowed. Then do something. I I go into my bag. I go into my bag. uh, And I pull out five days worth of rations, uh, which I would have made myself from uh, salted meats and uh, breads and all sorts of other things. Um, But five days for people. Uh, should be enough for three wolves for now. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm gonna hand those packages up to you. Hey, yo, Atreus. Hey, yo. (laughs) In wolf. (laughs) How does that sound in wolf? (laughs) (laughs) Woof (laughs) What do you have for me? We got some food Like some salted meats and stuff Have you had salted meats? Pretty good It lasts a long time but I don't think you Yeah As, As you start to make your way back towards him He begins to step further into the camp With you Meeting you halfway And uh as he gets closer into the fire, it illuminates his entire body, and this is a fucking tremendous direwolf. You're beautiful. <laughs> he kind of puts his nose out towards the food. As he sniffs it, you feel the 
pressure of the wind pulling you almost into his nostrils. Mm. You like it? Is this good? He opens his mouth and reaches out to take one of the rations. One day's worth of food. Yeah. Eats Mm -hmm. one whole ration in in a single bite. Mm -hmm. There's five of them there for him. What's the take? You, you see him turn towards your horse. That looks tastier. Okay, well, the horse is off limits. I know he's not insulting my cooking. I know he's not insulting my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Why, well, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh-huh. This is what we've got. I will say roll one last persuasion check. I'll give you advantage mm-hmm. because you're offering him some delicious cooking. Mm-hmm. I also have fruit that I may possibly I offer fruit. up. You see him turn, looking towards the horse once more, but looking past it into the shadows. You hear him growl slightly, you understanding what he's saying. He says, leave it. See, we can be friends. This will do for now. Scoops up the food. The other two wolves making their way out from the shadows into the camp with you all. Stepping over the the various things. The two other massive fucking wolves, though not as big as Atreus. I'm going to be guarding Clover. Because I know what she looks like to a wolf. (laughs) As you say that, one of them, the closest to her, kind of eyes... You see its eyes almost... (laughs) Just widen up as he sees this large rabbit <laughs> asleep. A yip. Mm-hmm. A yip in that direction. Lowers its head and moves back towards the other two. Grabbing a ration each in the uh, in their mouths. Atreus taking another two for himself. I told you they were yummy, but I hope I hope the hunting gets better for you all. We're just passing through. But I'd like to consider you a friend if we encounter each other again. So I hope you'll remember this. Um, My name's Whisper. As uh, you're talking to Atreus, his his attention kind of shifts to the side behind you and you hear the sound of clawed uh, claws digging into the dirt. You see over your shoulder the large beaked head of Talon. This is its my wings. Other friend, Talon. <laughs> you see Talon's wings kind of spread out in this like in, uh, intimidating posture. Good to have friends. You see in- instantly the the two other wolves kind of s- lower their knees and s- start to slink back a little bit. Atreus kind of. S- you see him stand up a bit more. That ridge down his back popping up kind of moves a little bit closer to you. We'll be seeing you whisper. Yeah. Maybe we can play sometime. I can turn into a dire wolf too sometimes, and that would be really fun. Maybe you could show me around. You just hear him huff out of his nose and the three of them start to turn I mention of the I... word play his tail starts to wag a little <laughs> ball <laughs> yeah. I love having a druid here herself um, turn back to that too. see they were just hungry I mean it didn't have to be a fight or anything but 
Yeah, they're <laughs> hunting's really scarce around here, so I don't know if we want to if we'll get away with that again. Well, when we come back, we can bring extra for them. Mm. Thanks, Gormrog. That really saved the day. I didn't want them to attack our horse. I would have to kill them, and I don't want to kill a beautiful dire wolf like that. Yeah, I'm just worried about having enough for Talon, though. Well, Talon can fly. He's a good hunter. Oh. <laughs> are there um are there birds around here? A roll of perception check? Just in general. Not like right now. I know it's nighttime, oh. but like uh you haven't seen any birds besides the blue one? Okay. Um Talon ate them all. Yep. Just taking them out. Well, well that that that's kind of the question. Like, can he eat birds and, and like if we find wild fowl of any kind can we um cook those just trying to think like are there pheasant are there um you know over the uh, course of the last or... two days you haven't seen almost any actual animals in this space yeah that's upsetting um we'll have to figure something out as the three dire wolves reach the edge of the campfire, they all <clears throat> launch off at a full speed, kicking, ripping swaths of dirt up as they uh, as they launch off, pelting a few of you with with dirt as they as they leave. That's not necessary. Okay. That's so. Finally, I take my hand off my sword. Hey, good job, guys. We didn't have to fight. I love that for us. I'm going back to bed. I just don't like hurting animals. If it was like a person, I don't give a shit. I'd rather fight them. But animals are just doing animal things. They're just hungry. You did a great job, Whisper. Thanks. Yeah. Great job. <laughs> okay. All right. As. That? Um, I, I, if CZ's still, uh, if West, um, Finnick is still sitting up with me, <laughs> yeah. um, for the rest of the night, during the night, I'm going to, we're going to be chilling and I'm going to be showing her, like, with my dagger, ways to hold certain weapons and, like, you know, showing off a little bit sometimes while trying to show her how to hold, like, you know, weapons and every now and then pull my big sword out and to show our positions and ways to hold weapons. Um, I will be, even though I'm proficient in daggers, I will still be trying to copy him. Um, <laughs> what do I, have? I don't think I have any other melee weapons, but um, I will still be practicing along with him. Training montage activate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As you two finish up your your shift um, training with Tristan's big sword. Um, <laughs> off, off me. Who's who's gonna be next? Who's well, picking up the next shift. And I were gonna stay up the entire night. Okay. Okay. So. okay. So, the whole night. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Baby, it's so sweet we use it. I'm scared. So, as the next day arises, you all gathering yourselves together, uh, Finnick and Tristan both catching a level of exhaustion. Uh, who would like to roll the d20 for the day? I can do it again if let's have someone else do it. Do. Someone else do it every every time. I'll roll it. Didn't you roll it the first time, Tristan? Did I? I don't know. I, I think you did. Okay. Didn't Gormrod roll it the first time? No, no the the goblin Gormrod fight. Gormrod rolled the one. Yeah, the goblin oh. fight the day before from the last session. Okay. Over. All right. I rolled a twelve. Twelve. 
It was just a straight roll, right? Yeah. Yeah, 12. It's a luck roll. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Gormrog, since you and Clover are... Since you and Clover are uh, navigating once more, go ahead and parry you roll survival checks for me. Survival checks. 19. What is my survival? Plus three? Mm-hmm. Six. Six. Okay. okay. Um, a little bit rougher of a day. Um, but with every time you start to come off course and lose the road a little bit, Clover is there to help guide you back um you begin to make your way up into the actual mountain surrounding the gray valley moving out of the umber hills finally um as you are making your way up the road becoming a bit more dangerous especially trying to carry this cart up there um but at least for the time being, you don't run across any other hindrances or obstacles for the day. Nice. Um, I will say, as you get a little over three quarters of the way through the actual mountain, um, you do notice a cave. Uh, Clover, you you being the one with such a high passive perception, you notice that there is a cave uh, attempting to be obscured uh, against it, dug into the mountainside. Ooh, buried treasure. Huh? Buried treasure. Clover's going to point at the entrance. You want to go check it out? I immediately oh. walk right towards it. Like, not go directly back. Start walking in that direction. Well, we were on the cart. Should we pull the cart over? <laughs> oh, I he just hops off and leaves us. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um. I'm going to slow the cart down to a stop and, and signal to Whisper to pull over or whatever. Okay. Steer, steer Talon to the <laughs> side of the road. Parallel park. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Tristan, you enter into the cave first? No, no, no. I'm not, I was walking towards it. I'm not going in. Okay. I'm currently napping in the back of the cart. Okay. Um, so we're from the workout. I'd like to go right up to the door and check for traps. Okay. Go ahead and roll an investigation check for me. Sixteen. Okay. As you make your way over and start looking at like this artificial cover, there you uh, do notice one of the rocks towards the bottom that you would have to push out of the way. There is a spring, kind of pressed up against it that you s looks like it would be a, a trap of some sort. Um, can I disentrap it? Yeah, go ahead and roll a uh, dexterity plus uh you have your your proficient in in the thieves tools, right? Yeah. Okay, so roll a dexterity check and add your proficiency modifier. Twenty four. <laughs> it's no issue at all. This is amateurish compared to your deft hands, and you're easily able to disable this trap and push the rock across, opening up the pathway. Cool. I'm going to pull down my uh, night goggles so I can see, and I'm going to slowly sneak in. Okay. I'm going to follow in because I'm right there. I was right there. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, entering in, you see this small cutout almost into this into the side of the mountain. Uh, the back wall is, you see what looks like almost a rock slide might have happened against the back wall but the, uh, you can go ahead and roll another uh, investigation or perception check to check the room a little further if I'm helping sure okay first roll was a 26 
Second roll was a 25. Okay. So 26. As you scan around this room, you see that those rocks that are against the back wall look something strange about them. They look placed. And as you kind of look a little closer, you see a chest buried underneath there through the, the rocks. Well, um, <laughs> you're stronger than me. Do you want to help me move some of these rocks? Yes, and I start moving forward. And I, 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 I'm also, when I get to the rocks, I'm going to just take a look before I start grabbing anything. Okay. Um, roll a perception check or investigation, whatever works. Ten. Let's see. So, invest uh, or perception. Yep. They're both. Z uh, yeah. They're, oh no. Plus, uh, so Fifteen. Okay. Um. You don't see any specific traps set up against the rocks portion of it. So. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna look over before we go. Okay. Um, we gotta be careful. We don't know what's in here. And should we get the others before moving anything? Or, well, Finnick is sleeping. Um, and we shouldn't leave her alone. But if you want to go get either Whisper or Gormrog, then you can. I also feel like we could probably just do this ourselves, unless there's a monster in there. But if there's a monster in there, we can just scream. I'm a good screamer. With that being said, I'm going to lean forward in a, just a moment and just go to remove the first rock I turn over and see. Okay. Start clearing the rocks, and some of them tumble and fall. But nothing nothing happens besides that. So I'm, I'm going to look back at her and then look forward and then go to remove a little bit more closer to the chests. Okay. You are able to clear up the chest area and able to access it if you wanted to. There is uh, no lock on it besides the little latch that kind of keeps it closed. Okay. I'm going to this use my second. Look, I'm good. Are you... Okay. Uh, this is the very important part. We have to step back just in case that's a monster. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to send my uh, mage hand... I'm going to step back about, it goes 30 feet, so I'm going to make sure that there's like 25 feet between us and the yes, chest. Um, I'm going to send my mage hand. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Okay, okay, okay. And then I'm going to use my second mag's awareness on the chest. Okay. Oh, that's that's also smart. <laughs> uh, it is. There are no spells or magical items. The chest is not a spell or a magical item. Okay. Then I'm, after I, I, I make an obvious, like my scales kind of glow for a second and my hands make a form of the gaps, I go, okay. Well, now I'm going to send my mage hand to open it. Okay. Your mage hand kind of lifts it up. Uh, you hear it's like click and a few darts shoot out from the lid. Uh, based yeah, off nice. on your angle being over 25 feet away, they glide up and avoid you, but... It, oh, yeah. it was it was definitely trapped, <laughs> but otherwise the lid opens up and uh, inside you see a helping of gold coins and a roll of parchment that is tucked off to one side. I'm gonna grab it all. <laughs> okay, five hundred gold coins are yours, as well. How many coins? Five hundred. Okay. And uh, as you open and look at the. Uh, parcel it is a map of what you gather to be the area you're headed towards the gray valley mm. and there is a location marked on it uh with it's a, a small x with uh tgs initialed next to it okay cool well, let's go i'm take sorry this to everybody. i'm sorry tds i just want to apologize for that okay Let's go take this to everybody. Okay, so Clover's going to walk out, um, and she's going to have gold in either hand, and she's going like this, and she's like, I'm, <laughs> I was right. It was treasure. I'm a treasure hunter now. And then um, she's going to split up the 500 gold with all of us, so we each get 100 gold. Oh, nice. and a map, and a map. Look, I'll hand that to Gormrog since he's uh, navigating. 
TDS. What is that? Mm-hmm. Whisper, do you know at, what that means? Mm-mm. Looking at the map, is it on our way? Is it out of our way? Uh, it, you you get the sense that it would maybe take you uh, off for a half day to a day, depending on how bad <laughs> things are. Um, Whisper and Gormrog, you both can roll history checks. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's probably really good. I'm proficient in history, so that is a dirty 20. I got a nat 20, but I have a minus one, so a 19. Still a natural 20. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, the first thing the pair of you think is uh, knowing the gray valley and the th- all of the historical significance to it uh you are aware that this is where the final battle of tristrasig was uh and you the rumors of his sword being lost in the gray fields this is what it strikes you as his sword is said to be a very powerful magical item um, but that's probably all you would know from that. Tristrasig was the previous ruler of the continent of Taldore, uh, eventually fighting a battle uh, against Zan Taldore, um, you with your natural 20. I think I remember my sister Hannah telling me about this once. Hannah? Yeah. Um, there might be like a, or there's rumors that there's like a magical sword here at this at this battlegrounds, old battlegrounds. Oh, Joe, quick question. Um, if I was sleeping all day, would it be enough? For yes, and you can rest? go ahead and uh, get a full rest at this point. Cool. Um, yeah, I know that's the guy who uh, bought Taldore. Um, his sword's supposed to be really important, really magical, really powerful. It's probably what that is. Does anybody here happen to have an interest in powerful magical swords? Yes. No. <laughs> but I do have an interest, a newfound interest in treasure hunting. Also, when he does that, I'm gonna give him that that look that he knows that that you you know I'm you know I want it. Shh. <laughs> um. So, would everyone be in agreement to taking the day off of our scheduled path to go pursue? Oh. Arg! <laughs> yes. that, that could be fun. Also, good morning. We found treasure. Hmm. You got 100 gold. Isn't that the best way to wake up? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we're, we're going to find more. So, uh, I'll set a course for Tristraxig's sword. Okay. So, the rest of the day is going to be getting through, uh, this mountain range. Uh, eventually you pull down, just as the sun begins to go down, you reach the the pathway onto the Grey Valley. And as you look out across it from your higher elevation, it is a sea of gray, dead, petrified trees. You see shadows moving out across the entirety of the the forest ahead of you. Uh, Whisper, when you made it through here last time, you vividly remember it being a 
horrible place. Um, while you were fortunate enough to not encounter everything, you are aware of the rumors that it is filled with demons and just all around bad. <laughs> this is a bad spot, you all. This is spooky and first and dangerous. It's probably like the scariest part of the path that we've encountered so far. So we should be careful. Maybe. Don't worry, Whisper. I'll protect you. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys going to set up camp or continue into the night? I don't feel comfortable stopping. Well, you're not in the forest yet. Oh, we're not? No, you're right... Oh. Uh, on like a, a elevation just outside of it. Well, if we were gonna make camp, this is probably the place to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Everyone wanted. I want to practice some some spells and stuff. So maybe if we do encounter things here, it could be more helpful. All right, let's make camp. Okay. So, uh, did my message go through, guys? Uh, one of them did. I only sent one. Okay, and it's not showing up on my side. Um, I did get. Okay. Um. So. Uh, as you all set up camp for the evening, just for simplicity's sake, um, you run your shifts for the evening. Does anyone want to do anything in, anything in particular? Um, just more practicing for me. Okay. Yeah, same. That was going to say I was spending my shift a third of practice. Okay. I'm just sleeping. Okay. Okay, um, so the evening passes as you all go about your various business, and the sounds coming from the forest as you sit here on your higher point are disturbing to say the least. You hear the sounds of growls and unnatural screams, and at one point you feel like you hear a faint buzzing, but... You, what it might mean or you're not quite sure um, the but as the next day rises you all begin to gather yourselves together and make your way off on the path towards the blade that you seek um, using the map I'll say well, you guys already have advantage. Um, go ahead and roll uh, another survival check. I have a plus 22. five on survival. I don't know who has higher, in case we were wrong those. Well, I just He's rolled a 22. It. Oh, so then, yep. I didn't I mean, say anything. If you want to try, go for it. But... I'm not good at reading that. 18, 19, 20, 22, 23. Okay. Hell yeah. All right, so the Gormrog and Tristan kind of taking charge as you go try and line up with the map and make your way down the mountain and into the forest. Uh, all of you, as you are trudging your way through this forest, it's each step you see almost puffs of ash uh, lift off the ground in this dead and rotting space. As your cart kind of uh, bashes against trees, trying to move through this crack in this almost uh, like glass being hit with a stone, you see this the petrified wood. Um, as you kind of begin to wind your way through the forest, you see the shadows almost impressively creep on you before stepping back. Can someone go ahead and roll a d20 for me? Uh, I can do it this time. Okay. 
a seven. Uh, Reroll. Cool. Nineteen. Okay. As you are making your way through, uh, Clover being the first to hear it, you hear the loud sound of flapping. Uh, creature. I immediately. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I immediately jump in front of Whisper and shield her. Okay. <laughs> um, you hear the, the sound of flapping, and you notice a shadow f- fly overhead of all of you, uh, basking in this massive shadow for a moment, blocking out the sun before it disappears. Okay. You hear that sound moving closer again. We all hear this? Yeah. Not Talon, is it? It is not Talon. No, Talon is trudging along next to you with Whisper on his back. I'd like to um, pull down my goggles and just try to get a good look of what's around us. My dark vision goggles so I can see in the dark or light. Um, wherever this creature is, it is above the, the tree line, uh, so it, it's in the, the light of the sun, um, whereas you're kind of in the shadowy area, but go ahead and roll your perception check. You rolled a 23. Okay. Um, you don't see anything in the shadows around you, but as you kind of look up into the sun, you see a bird-like form far larger than any birds you've seen, at least recently, Fly over once again. You see it with your, especially your high perception. You see it turn bank once more through the tree line. It's uh, the light of it shining down, blocking out the the sun as it turns. (laughs) You see it land on one of the trees. Instantly, the tree kind of crumples and cracks underneath its weight. And it, see it's uh, lift its claws up and kind of try and readjust itself in the new thing. And it kind of lowers its beaked head down to look at all of you. This giant eagle. I'm just going to steady, get ready, <laughs> grab the hilt of my sword, and then wait for what, you know, Sin still waiting for. The neck movement or sound. Whisper, are you gonna talk to them? Mm, I don't know. I Hello? thought. Uh, I studied different spells last night. <laughs> um, but now you can turn into a giant eagle, at the very least. Um, try. <laughs> uh, can you turn into a giant eagle yet? Um, I don't know if she can fly, but I can't fly. She's seen it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. You can't turn into flying creatures, though. Well, I like my you want to try something else? Communicate. Turn into a goldfish. Um, uh, um, Can I walk towards it and try to see if I can figure out what it wants or what it's looking for? Sure. Uh, Go ahead and roll a nature check or an animal handling check. Well. Okay. Um, as you approach it, it doesn't appear hostile at all in, in any way. Um, kind of lowers its head down to you. You see it looking towards your pouch where you keep your meat sticks and uh, kind of clicking its beak towards it. I seek out one of my now three pocket kebabs. Is this what you want? Oh, grabs it out of your hand. Oh. 
You're hungry too. Everyone's just hungry. I'm, I'm right where I belong. Uh, turns, it cocks its head in almost a questioning manner, uh, and you, you see it uh, looking towards you and cocks its head and looks up towards the rest of the forest and get the sense it's a, trying to ask you a question. I don't know what you're asking me. I cocked my head back. Oh. <laughs> uh, do you want another kebab? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Reaches its head down back towards your pouch and clicks its beak. Okay, I give it another kebab. I'm almost out of kebabs. This, this is the look. Second and the last one. Okay. Uh, as you as it scarfs down that other kebab, it kind of jumps down off this tree that it's destroyed, landing it out in front of you, and uh, it turns and presents its back towards you. I will um, <laughs> gingerly walk towards it to see if this is what it wants. Doesn't make any moves. It kind of lowers itself down so you can get on easier. I'm going to give Talon a look. You see him, his eyes narrow. I'm going to get on the bird. Okay. It's going to end poorly. <laughs> Let's you on. I, 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 I see this and I'm very uncomfortable about it. And I, I kind of like, like move forward. Off, like we're on the cart still, right? Yeah. As uh, a yeah. whisper, as you climb on, it pulls its wings up and <laughs> launches off into the air. As you <laughs> hold on to it. Whisper's gone again. <laughs> it circles around in the air with you on its back. Kind of like looks back towards you as it circles, wondering where like where it should start heading towards. Uh, I mean, this is just fun for me. Uh, I've got a bunch of friends down there. Down there. Looks down. Looks back yeah. at you. Looks off in the horizon, in the direct, like, looking for where you wanted to go. Back to friends. <laughs> Starts to fly back down. <laughs> your, your cheeks, as it takes a dive bomb, your cheeks kind of catch air and... <laughs> drops you. Oh. As it comes back down, it comes, lands down in where it picked you up from. Thank you. Um, when it when it lands, can I pull out the map and point to the map and see if it knows where the what I'm showing it? Looks down at the map and then like tick step uh, uh, leans up and kind of cocks its head to the side for a minute and then turns and goes. <laughs> it's a pointer dog. Yeah, I think it might be showing us to the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I a really road. wish I wasn't prepared for fighting right now. <laughs> yeah, let's go that way. Yeah. And we follow the bird. <laughs> I'm going to druid craft a flower and put it on the bird. Head. <laughs> Take the flower, kind of. Its eye kind of swivels to look at it before. <laughs> Continuing on. Uh, but so now we have horses, a cart, a griffin, <laughs> a giant eagle, the five of us. Or menagerie. But either way, as this new larger party makes its way through the forest, uh, a few hours later, eventually coming up to a valley uh, as you get closer you notice the trees are progressively becoming more and more arched almost as if there was some sort of large force that spread out from a centralized area and knocked all these trees down uh, but as you approach closer and cro closer and closer the you see buried in the center of this clearing a large gray 
sword. Its blade almost looking like twisted molten metal with his golden pommel stuck into the ground. Next to it, you see two ethereal figures, arm knights in full plate mail armor standing on either side. Their ghostly forms standing guard next to the blade. Well, I think we found it. There's no way this could be this easy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I didn't want to say it first. What do we do, team? What do we do? I mean... How how far away is the sword and the knight? Uh, they're in the center of this large circle, um, probably about 150 feet directly ahead into the center. As you stand on like the where the edge of the woods, uh, the forest is. Does it look like they've noticed us, or are they? They're just sort of... staring right at you. And what's happening with the uh, the bird that helped us that, that brought us here? Uh, as you kind of get closer to this clearing. Are you still riding it, Whisper? Mm-mm. Okay. When we got back to the ground, I didn't know. Okay. Uh, as it kind of comes up to the clearing, it looks at you, comes, uh, steps out away from the tree line, flaps its wings, and begins to fly off into the Hi. sky. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, as you stand... Prepared to enter in towards the clearing and try and claim the sword. That's where we're going to call it for tonight. Hey, I wonder if it's like a sword in the so- sword in the stone situation. That's, ex- that's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> like only the chosen one may grab the sword. <laughs> I was thinking it was going to be like a riddle or something. I guess we'll see. Maybe both. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Oh, my God. I like riddles. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, We'll be back next week with another episode. Uh, I want to thank Lil Steffers for modding for us today. Uh, Appreciate it. Appreciate the help. You did awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Besides that, uh, we're going to launch a raid. Um, Oh. Let me get that going. Uh, Let's go with Paper Dungeon today. All right, uh, everyone, thank you so much. Uh, We'll catch you next week. Anyone got anything before we go? All right. Don't forget, I love you, geeks. Love you guys. And we'll see you next week. Bye.